Hi, welcome to Carswell's Customs. Today we're going to catch up on the V8 and G8 SWAT progress, take a look at the fuel system, cooling system, and some other mods that I've made. Let's go check it out. All right, so what we've done here, other than cut the sheet metal up and make it look terrible, is went ahead and put a uh, ZL1 E85 compatible fuel pump in, and then I went ahead and utilize these adapter fittings that go right from the uh, the stock fuel line the click fuel line but I upped it to half inch fuel line so this is a 180 degree a union and then I've got half inch aluminum fuel line that runs from the uh, from the fuel pump all the way up to the engine compartment so I'll go ahead and show you that So you can see how this fuel line has been snaked through the stock fuel tank and we ran it around, made some nice smooth bends to it and riveted some uh, uh, retaining clips. And so what this fuel line runs up to is a large fuel filter. All right, and fully aware that the uh, ZL1 fuel pump has a fuel filter, but where we're taking this car is going to be, uh, for future upgrades, is going to be um, to a point where we can't supply the engine with the uh, stock ZL1. So just doing some thinking ahead here with the aluminum half-inch fuel line and the uh, uh, very large uh, steel, uh, stainless steel screened uh, fuel filter here. So, because we're going to be running E85 now and later. And so we bent this around. And then we carried it all the way up here. Oh, looks like I lost it. Hold on. There we go. Sorry. We carried it around here, riveted it to the firewall, and then ran it out to... Uh, There, so we can tie back into, we can make some sort of uh, uh, fuel line that runs to the uh, intake manifold and then the upgraded uh, E85 fuel injectors and all that business. So, I did want to show that you can reuse the stock. Um, fuel and brake lines, the uh, the steel ones here. Um, now you will have to drill out the rivets, but inside the rivets place I put a, um, a riv nut and then a, uh, a small bolt to hold that uh, that whole um, uh, assembly in. So don't throw those clips away. Uh, drill the rubber out if you need to bore it out for half inch fuel line and then just reuse them uh, where you need them. They're very strong. All right, so inside, up where the radiator support is, you'll see a couple rivet nuts that I've placed in there on both sides. And you'll also notice that I cut the, uh, the fan shroud back. Now, earlier, before there was quick drop-in G8 um, fan assemblies, we had to come up with our own deal because our, you know, our, six, our six liter was was pretty hopped up so we need to get a uh, cooling system that would uh, that would keep up with it so let me go ahead and show you what that is all right so as you can see I like to drop the nuts and bolts otherwise those two riv nuts here that are into this frame I went ahead and TIG welded up some simple aluminum mounts for the radiator that we had to upgrade to. <clears throat> so, again, this was before they had so many quick fixes for the G8 cooling system when you hopped up the engine. 
So what we did was we spec'd out a Howe Racing radiator and then I TIG welded up the mounts. So, let's show you how that goes. All right, so you can see we've got this monster How Racing radiator in here now. The tanks are three inches in width here, and it holds a ton more fluid than the stock system. And we went ahead and used AN fittings in the uh, cooler, the in tank cooler for the transmission. So we, re we reduced those down and we took the stock fittings the stainless fittings for the uh, 6L80E transmission. I flared them and put the uh, AN uh, ends on them and it goes right from the uh, the stock hard lines into this Howe Racing radiator. So, you can see how those sit down in like the cups. Now the bolts there and then the riv nuts pretty much just keep the uh, mounts from moving. Most of the weight is handled by the chassis itself so the radiator isn't bouncing on a you know 16th inch uh, piece of aluminum bolted to the chassis all right so you can see with a little bit of fab work here lights bad on that one but if you make a small relief cut into the stock retaining clips or whatever these things are called it will slide down right over the metal uh, flange here on this uh, on this radiator so let me pull this one out also what I would do because it is kind of a tight fit tough to come off. Oh, come on. There we go. And you can see the little tiny indentions here in the radiator. So what I would do is also take my grinder and knock these corners off. You can see right down in here. Like that corner right there, that corner right there. Knock those corners off so they don't push their way into your radiator. Alright, so the How Racing Radiator that we use here. Um, let's see. I'll have to get the part number and I'll put that in the description. But this thing has absolutely cured our heating uh, woes. Um, this huge aluminum radiator is just fantastic. Uh, I don't get any affiliate marketing or anything like that either. I'm just telling you guys what works. So, um, Also, this fan here, this is a 1995 to 1997 Thunderbird or Lincoln Mark 8 electric fan. And honestly, these things move some air. They're monsters. Uh, you have to make sure your wiring is up to up to the task because these babies pull air on low and on high. And you know, I'd like to thank uh, Lucky Costa and uh, Tony Angelo for pushing the uh, the idea to use these out again. I had got this before uh, before I saw the uh, Hot Rod Garage episode, but they uh, they they talked about this fan and they they rock the house it's a uh, Dorman part number 62118 and again they're they're fantastic so buy it a couple more items we're gonna put on the G8 here I want to go ahead and put an engine cooler on or engine oil cooler and to do that we need some uh, heavy-duty mounts we're gonna put this right in the front of the uh, right in the front of the radiator 
on this support. This is all steel here. This is all steel, so we could be able to uh, weld those mounts to it and have a lot of nice, cool, fresh air slamming into the engine oil. Uh, we bought the kit for the e, uh, E85 uh, compatibility. Just easier to get the kit instead of building my own. And then we also got the uh, um, LS vent kit to help, uh, again, help help the cooling, make sure there's no air pockets on the top of the heads. And uh, Yeah, so that'll help keep, keep the engine cool. We'll run some E85 and uh, blow the tires off. All right, yeah, I knew there was something I was forgetting. So part of the oil cooling system, I went ahead and purchased one of these... Uh, oil cooler plates if you will and so ran that into some 90 degrees and uh, push lock hose and so we'll run this hose all the way up front to the uh, to the oil cooler and that should take care of that now something you do want to be concerned about here is we do have headers on this ride and so these two hoses are extremely co close to the headers themselves so I'll go ahead and show you what we did there Alright, so as you can see, this oil cooler block is really close to the headers. And that, that space, that distance between these guys here, here we go, is super tight. That's after me banging the headers with a hammer to make clearance. So you absolutely, if you're going to put an oil cooler on, you got headers, you got to make sure you... Give them a couple of wax. Now for the G8, these are the uh, Cook's long tubes. So we'll go ahead and show you where I uh, massaged them. All right, so here you can see where the the hammer did its work and uh, and pushed these headers back so they don't overheat the uh, the oil cooler. I'll also wrap these headers with uh, high temperature header wrap so that should keep a lot of the heat out of the engine compartment and away from the uh, oil cooler. Um, so, Hey, thanks for hanging with me today. Be sure to check out my Factory 5 video where I go over different colors and wheel combinations. Give me some feedback. Thanks again.